Once John had established himself as a top radio DJ, he cynically decided to make a move towards real stardom and the ensuing bucket loads of cash. That's TV to you and me. His first stab, a shameless double-edged sword. Yes, an attempt to win over both the lads with his dexterous footballing set pieces and the teeny bopper girly market by reinventing himself as a dashing pin-up with copious amounts of bare flesh and nice wavy hair. Mmm, time to move on, John. But then, ooh, that pop star malarkey looks tempting, thought our hero to himself. And in a move which to this day is Fox psychiatrist the length and breadth of the country, John decided upon the mandolin as his chosen weapon for this Top of the Pops appearance. A decision which would see his pop star career become as truncated as his soiree into football. Time to move on, John. Oh, no, I can't bear to watch it. He then considered other DJs with successful TV careers. And now, as it happens, something really fantastic. And as it happens, it's the big... Clever. He used Jimmy Savile as his role model in a cameo appearance on the goodies of all things. <laughs> How's about that, then, guys and gals? Think, Tom. Not clever. Howdy, partners, and welcome to Top of the Pops. So, at last, he got his first real break, presenting Top of the Pops. At least we could rely on John to rise above the big, hairy Weetabix DLT's ponchon for donning hilarious comedy outfits. Extraordinary. Why do they do Wrong. it? Wrong! Top of the Pops debut, Marilyn! Yeah. Welcome millions of admirers throughout the known world to another Top of the Pops. And this week we're gonna Ooh, my aching sides! It gets worse. Hey. hey, we got a brand new number one, don't we? Uh, yeah, OK. Well, will it still be number one next week? You'll have to watch Top of the Pops with Mike Reed and Steve Wright to find out. <laughs> that's very, that's Billy Joel. And yeah. Easily my favourite number one record of the week. <laughs> that's madness and wings of a dog. Delicious with a white wine sauce and, uh, I think at this time of the year, petit poire, if you can get them. This is Gary Newman. <laughs> now making their annual appearance on Top of the Pops and looking pretty darn menacing to me, here are the Cure. Those are the Thompson twins, and that's called Doctor Doctor. Welcome to another Top of the Pops. We're the Burke and Hare of British Broadcasting. I'm John. Here's the likeable Canadian. That's UB40 in their first number one record. And it's nearly the end of this week's Top of the Pops. Next week's programme will be introduced by those Radio 1 lookalikes, Andy Peebles and Peter Powell. Right, I'm off back to the Trossacks. We're going to leave you with new water. This is Confusion. Now that's you, Varmint. And then, of course, it was John's man at CNA years. Next week's Top of the Pops will be introduced by a couple more retards holding their stomachs in. Next up, a duo who I think have modelled themselves on us. I certainly like to think that that's true. Yes, still at number one, wham! <laughs> Tomorrow with the big one for 1985. And this is a big hint, come on. Mwah. Merry Christmas. Untrammeled lust <laughs> consumers. <laughs> then schoolboy new wave of heavy metal chic chic. To Devonair. Princess, that's a, a little joke for you. It's... To stand up comedian. Last time I was on this program, I forgot the name of the Amen Corner. No chance of me forgetting the name of the um, uh, uh, Human League. <laughs> Kim Wilde, nice head of hair, nice pair of boots, 17 quid, she told me. Once more. To Shakespearean lovey. So desperate to be an actor. Back to stand up. Michael Crawford, who this week won a variety club award. Mind you, so did Mike Smith. <laughs> I'm sorry about these people, I like to take the kids with me when I go out working. We've done number 10. To casual. Now we move inexorably up to number 8. Now we will tell you everything you know is about Peter Sutton. Stand up. Hi, fans. Well, Pete, that's what I call him, he used to be in Chicago, and he's asked for 14 similar offences to be taken into consideration. But right now, it's Phyllis Nelson. This is Move Closer, if you dare. It's a comedy double act with Janice Long. Dixon. It sounds like a sordid incident in a cheap motel. <laughs> I wouldn't know about that. That's not what I hear, Janice. <laughs> Gary Davis next week on his own. Yeah, nobody will work with him. <laughs> We're we'll leaving with Janet Jackson, and Peely is going to dance because we know... And finally, to frighteningly accurate profit. I'll be back in 1996. Time to move on, John. We're joined by a former colleague of mine from Radio 1, John Peel. Welcome to Breakfast Time. A pleasure. Once again. Having approached the Pops, as us who've presented it badly like to call it, from every conceivable angle, 
John wisely shifted his attention towards a more scientific, almost tomorrow's Wildean role. I think this is a pious this hope. Is, are you on the air tonight? Uh, well, I think the next few minutes may decide. <laughs> Let's just uh, get this sorted. I like mm. the seat. That's very okay. You're going you're to launch me into. Uh... You, you get the pedals going and I'll push, and we'll just wave you goodbye. Okay. All right, Thanks then. for coming in, John. Bye. Okay. Hey, this is all right. Yeah. Can you mind the cameras? Nah. Oh. Time to move on, John. <laughs> so welcome, John Peel and Tony Blackburn. <laughs> the next stab at TV stardom saw John unwisely rubbing shoulders with possibly the most stomach-churningly tooth-laden cheese meister in the annals of showbiz. But enough of Tony Blackburn. Hey, that Teddy Wogan's all right, though, isn't he? Yeah, don't they? Good yeah. All the time, yeah. Terrific, Wonderful. yeah. You were the most unconventional because you were doing something oh, rather, ra rather far fetched. Oh, but the, the thing was, that fumed God. You that's, were, that's you were right. into to frocks and everything. That's right. I say, yes, psychedelic music. <laughs> oh, no yeah. about it. Yeah. But I knew I was all right when they got. Uh, I was taken in to meet uh, somebody who'd been put in charge of radios one and two, and uh, I went in there. And he's, I was the last of the DJs to be taken in there and introduced to him. He was obviously very nervous because he thought I was going to do something unforgivable, like rub drugs into the roots of his hair or something, you know, it's obviously fearful. <laughs> Eventually, the most revered man in British broadcasting would use the sharpest tool of all on his well-worn DJ workbench, his untouchable knowledge of credible music. Go on, have him, John. John Peel, can you identify this group and tell me what the lineup was at the time of their oh, first hit no. single? And there uh, they was are. Susie and the Banshee. Hiding in the bushes? Yes. Uh, Susie? Was, uh, <laughs> was in the band at the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Steve Severin is still yes. there. Oh, no. I uh, think you're bluffing. I think you know all these, really. No, I don't, because I can never remember people's names, Billy. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Well, what about his well-known laconic sense of humour? John Pilby, your balls are still. Can you answer this question? <laughs> 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 Late at night, under the shroud of darkness, John Stapleton can often be found wrapping kettles up in toilet paper. True or false? True. It is true. It is true. <laughs> it is true. He's a sleepwalker, you see. Uh, apparently, it runs in his family, Vic. Yes. Hmm. But I'm going to ask you to nominate one of your team to go for the really big money and play the Prama Ding a Ling Long Dong. <laughs> John Peel. John Peel! Well if you'd like to join me at the front here, John, I think you'll find my colleague Pickery is waiting for us there. Hello, oh, John. There he is. How do you do? Uh, great nice to see, to see you. you. And yes, terrific. Well, in front of us here is a perfectly ordinary pram. Right. We're going to ask you to get inside the pram right. and completely conceal yourself with this blanket. <laughs> as soon as you believe yourself to be concealed, shout out, cry out, I've finished. Yeah. We'll then pull the hood down and for any part of your body that is still showing, we'll deduct money from the potential £100 you can win. So if you're ready, Mr John Peel. I've lived all my life for this. Please cover yourself in this pram. In you get. There he's going in. He's going in. I can see him getting in now. I'm handing him the blanket. <laughs> There's a couple of legs in there, some... Uh... I can see Heinz doing very well up to now. There's the blanket. He's starting to shield himself now with the blue blanket. It's just tossing it very gently <laughs> over his feet. I'll just give him a little hand there. And, uh, how's that? Covered. He's covered! 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 I think I can see a shoulder, which is part of the arm. That's part of the arm and another shoulder, so we've yeah. got to deduct another 20 pounds. 20 pounds? Oh, oh, well, well, Bob oskin has gone. He's back. John, <laughs> you've done very well, cos you've concealed, for example, your knees, your feet, your genitalia, of course. <laughs> which That's isn't exactly a limb, but it does count. <laughs> That's very well done, and I'm going to give you 50 pounds to add to the 12 pounds you've already won. Mm, and now it's a comedy treble act. Where will it all end? Not back at Top of the Pops, surely. Wrong! 
Hello there, I'm the ghost of Christmas past, and this is Top of the Pop. We've got loads of my favourites in the programme, and I suspect some of yours as well. Everything but the girl. Don't forget that next week, Ronan and Steve out of Boys Zone will be doing this job. Don't forget uh, Top of the Pop. Inevitably. Look out, John! He's behind you! Good evening, this is not a Radio 2 takeover. It's slightly more than that. I've come into your space because tonight, John Peel, this is your life. Yes, and the ultimate accolade, this is your wife. Sorry, this is your life. Hello, Sheila. For the pops, the goodies, shooting stars, this is your life. Blimey, you'll be doing Animal Hospital next. What? I don't believe it. Rolf! I played at Sun Horizon, and I sang it, but it hasn't worked. <laughs> Come and sit down. Come and join us I over here. Down. Yeah, could you do it again now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sun to rise, bringing the morning. I don't think anything's going to help the weather out here today. Absolutely nothing. You realise this is the end of the world that we're witnessing here. Good night. See ya. Has this man no shame? He'll be working with a struggling escapologist next. Oh, yeah. No, we have got proper jobs. It's all right, love. We've got all day. Uh-oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. Hurry up, love. It's only 15 minutes long, this programme, you know. What's that? Oh, dear. Gained a little bit of weight. <laughs> Here we go. Yay! Yay! Well done. Thank you very much. John, maybe we can try that one later. I think we'll try it. Up. The short skirt and the high heels, I think, are just I for think me. I think it'll see you. Me you tonight, look fantastic. Yes. And I was, uh, 15, Still, this job does have its perks, you know. Sometimes you get to meet your heroes. Why, I got to meet John Peel once. Kids and uh, my boyhood hero. Lonnie Donegan. Oh, well, the rock and the man, she's a money good road. When the rock and the man is the road to ride. The rock and the man, she's a money good road. If you want for the money, got a penny like a penny, get your ticket at the station on the rock and the line. A, B, C, the way Hicks was E. The cat's in the cover, but he don't see me. Oh, no, John, no, 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 not the skiffle workshop, no! Come with me, if you ever. So there you have it. Conclusive proof that even a stream of ill-advised TV appearances won't necessarily kill off a successful radio career. Hmm, that's a relief.